coach here replacing Doc Campbell who retired in 1954 and I took over as head men's tennis coach on a part-time basis in 1955 and became full-time in 1968. Well I used to like all racket sports when I was a child. I uh, played mainly at home or with family friends in the beginning. I remember hitting against the, the, the kitchen garage door and garage door when I was about seven or eight and playing up in the backyard with my family. In England, we had a grass court in the backyard, and I used to hit there, and I've always enjoyed racket sports. Tennis, of course, is right up there among my favorites. advice and your teammates will give you the best advice, 
but I mean, it's up to you to incorporate all this into your game. If you're down, it's just you, not like basketball or softball or baseball or anything, you know, where your teammates can pick up a slack. Guys roll into practice at 7.30 p.m. every night to get in their daily workouts. Practice starts by having a short warm-up. The team does jump rope and also does a light jog around the court to get their blood flowing and to heat the body up before stretching. Once warmed up, the team makes sure to stretch out all important muscles such as the legs, back, and groin to lessen the chance of any injuries occurring. Once finished, the team gathers around to listen to suggestions from Peter, the coach. We've had some good service on my team. I've got one from Scott Miller, we got his finals in say singles and doubles. He had terrific serve. His key was to reach up for the ball. To reach up for the ball. A lot of times in the second serve, say, I don't want a double fall. I'm just do this. <laughs> That's the time you hit a ball in the net. You see? And, and, and you come halfway through and say, I'm choking. I'm going to stop my swing. Stop right here. You know what? You have to go all the way through your swing. Hit spin on it. Okay, it goes in the net. Hit the side of the ball. Then hit over it in the back. Hit the side and then come over. Then reach up. Reach up. You can jump. A lot of guys jump. They don't jump like that, but they press so hard on the ground that their feet actually hit the ground. Right. Okay? So just remember those points. The okay? And at those points, but the thing is, I can talk about it. It doesn't mean that's going to work with you. So I want you to, to try these things. I'm just putting suggestions into your head. I want you to be able to set three in a row down here. I'm just trying to help you right now. If you find a, another way of doing it, fine. Ten. Okay? All right. <laughs> the guys are now ready to go and split up onto different courts to do drills. Whatever the guys need to work on, whether it be forehands or volleys, they use the practice time to perfect these shots so they can be successful in match play. An intercollegiate tennis match is scored by using a seven point system. Each of the six singles matches count for one point and the team that wins at least two out of the three doubles matches gets the final point, adding up to seven points. The first team to win four points clinches the match, but all matches are played till the end. Before each match, the team gets together and the coach gives a pep talk. The team that's good, they like the, the, the volley well. I mean, they come in very aggressive on the volleys, so I would say try to, uh, uh, try to play with the controlled aggression. You know, you know, get them deep and move them around with the cross court angles, but don't hit so close you're going to beat yourself. Obviously, you know, hustle and uh, try to try to hit the good passing shots if they come in. I mean, really try to run the balls down, all the balls, uh, you know, because people can miss. Yeah. And a controlled aggression. And no matter what the score is, give, give it all your, your all out best, you know, all the time. And, uh, you know, they lost a couple points to Trenton State. So, uh, and a couple to Amherst, so, uh, you know, I mean, uh, 
Yeah, they're beatable. Let's they're go. beatable. Yeah. They're beatable, Let's go, man. Guys. Let's Let's put it in now. Put it in now. Double Let's point. Let's go, guys. Play with all your heart. It's a big Should fucking team. Let's kick, Mickey Let's kick their fucking asses, man. We can come this far. There's these fucking guys from, from Maryland, for Christ's sakes. Let's <laughs> fucking go, man. Where's this our year? What are we right? doing? Mickey. 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 Mickey on three. Mickey. 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 On three. Yeah. Mickey's been good luck for us. Right, let's, let's, let's do it. Three. Mickey! During matches, the team supports each other and cheers each other on. Yeah, okay, okay. port style. That's it, port oh. Represent Matt style. Port dance. Go, Karen. Who did? He just went out and some Yeah, come on, it hit the neck corner. Like, it, it was close. It was definitely <laughs> close. Vamanos, port dance. It was, I think he's got part. I think he got part of the line, though. What happened? Yeah, stick Ethan? Steve. What happened? What happened? Oh. Let's go, car. No funny business. Let's go right now. What happened, yo? Jump on him. What happened over there, yo? Oh, the, uh, it was a net cord. Karn, Karn took the first set on a net cord uh, passing shot that was probably out, but I was like, "Come on!" <laughs> and he was like, "He didn't know it was close." No, I think I think it caught the line. Peter Peter Lyman, the the pistol, lucky uh, lucky Lyman, uh, funny funny man. I'm sure people have uh, seen him walking around campus or whatnot, but this guy. He's hysterical. So we gonna yeah, keep on winning. <laughs> you know that, of course, you know, but you still gotta play saying? tennis, you know? You can't win without playing tennis. <laughs> <laughs> so you gotta keep on playing tennis. <laughs> now, boy, <laughs> let me <laughs> say this. Uh, which way, left or right? Uh, I would go uh, left right now. Yes, it'd be okay. <laughs> I've been mean, here in the United States for I can't get rid of my uh, like? southern accent, you know? Yeah. <laughs> what kind of food do you like, Peter? But I want you to uh, play good tennis tomorrow. <laughs> Even though you think you can win everything. You gotta play good tennis. You gotta watch the ball. Move your feet. <laughs> <laughs> Bring your knees. <laughs> Racket angle. You remember the first lesson? Rack. <laughs> oh, just love the <laughs> Thank you, court towel. Court towel. Tell Karan to hurry up and get a court towel. <laughs> Pete bugging. Pete, you're bugging. Tennis is his life. He just gives everything up to tennis and squash. And yeah. I mean, he forks out so much money to take us to California to play for the teams, to pay for stringing Covers our budget. jobs. Every everything, year, everything. Every year we probably go over our budget. That's say a lot. And he, he covers that out of his own pocket, which is pretty cool. And he, uh, we're sort of, I guess, you could call us his family, I guess. Something. His children. Because, yeah. uh... He just has, like, a sister. And, well, in a uh, way, like, I mean, he's still, like, I mean, because he's, he, his, in his mind, I think he's still so active, you know? Mm -hmm. But just physically, he just can't do it. And in a way, like, when we win, you know, he also wins too. It keeps him going, you know, so that's why it's important mm -hmm. for everybody on the team. Just like, you know, it's our, a lot of the seniors, it's like we got to do a lot of things for Pete, you know, a lot of victories, a lot of wins in California that never, you know, or any wins that we have never really happened. So, yeah, like today, we, we he just beat it. NYU, and I mean, he really did. They weren't a strong team at all, but uh, he was so happy after. He was like in such a good mood, you know, in the beginning yeah. of the match, like, uh, can't take NYU, uh, not seriously. <laughs> could be challenging. We got some good guys. I heard about them. And we're like, what are you talking about? They're not even right in the East. We're gonna destroy them, right? So we were pretty confident, obviously. And, but I think uh, that's what. So then we won, and, you know, and then he goes back to being normal, completely happy, and he's like, sm all smiles and like cracking jokes and kidding around with us in the van and stuff. So it's pretty funny. You know what it really it also comes down to is a Pete's personality. You know, it's because. He's, remember that guy at uh, Binghamton, that the older gentleman who was Stark's father? Mm -hmm. He would, um, there's, you know, and he, he was just telling us, like, how Pete was, like, the greatest tennis player, that he yeah. would kill any of the pros now. And it wasn't like, you know, bragging about, like, or trying to make some, like, boast his character up. But, and he would also make the comment saying that, like, Peter, regardless of how bad a player was, how, like, you know, terrible he was, you know, we got a player on the team, you know, he always says garbage all the time, you know, but, yeah. um, you know, Pete would always be like, he's always boasting everybody, and he's like, oh, they got a couple good guys, you know, they could give you some competition, because he's always, like, you know, yeah. trying to talk the best about people, so. He definitely is, he's one of the probably most respected people, and, yeah. you know, I don't know, I think at our school, in terms of faculty and coaches and everything, that everyone, everyone knows who Pete Lyman is, like, and everyone loves Pete Lyman, and I know, you know, I really respect him, and um, I love the guys awesome you know 
and I know my, my dad's like real good friends with him, you know, really liked Peter a lot. And I think a lot of a lot of people do, so he's a great guy.